And we're back. So, a uh, big week in uh, auctions. Of course, this was the week where we were going to have the A&A. Uh, &A. Let's see. Is it going live? It says slide. So, uh, yeah, this was the week for the a a World's Fair of Money, or would have been the last week. Of course, uh, that uh, was scuttled due to the coronavirus pandemic, unfortunately. And so uh, we uh, were in a situation where the two major auctions, the Stax Bowers auction and the Heritage auction, had to be uh, moved to different locations. The auctions were still held. And, uh, and so uh, we saw, uh, you know, different uh, uh, venues, but very strong sales overall. And I wanted to put together uh, some of the picks from both sales that I wanted to share with you uh, so that you could get uh, some insights into just how the sales went. So uh, looking through my notes, uh, going through the catalog, uh, trying to find uh, some of the most interesting coins. I think I succeeded, and uh, I'd like to share some of these with you. We will start here, uh, Heritage Lot number 3954. This is an 1895 Morgan dollar in proof, 67 cameo. Uh, this coin uh, is in an NGC holder and realized $117,000. And uh, the 1895 uh, dollar proof is a, a dream coin for Morgan dollar collectors. Uh, it is the only payment Morgan dollar of the day. Uh, the San Francisco Mint did strike 400,000 S Mint examples uh, in 1895, and a nice Jim Unk uh, S Mint will trade between 12 and 15,000 dollars. So the fact that there were no P Mint examples gives this issue a unique place in the series. Uh, and uh, so let's talk about tradition, because I think that comes into play when understanding the 1895 and its continued appeal. Contemporaneous to the release of this coin, collectors did not differentiate between proofs or business strikes, uh, and uh, or business strikes from one mint uh, or another. Uh, and I'm sure that, you know, there were a few collectors at the time who did, but the coin collecting community was rather small and uh, more, a lot, more or less, they just wanted an example of each date. And so collectors in the East Coast probably wouldn't have had access to estimate 1895 Morgan dollars if they wanted an 1895 dated coin. The only chance they had was this uh, proof issue, which they would have to buy directly from the Mint. It really wasn't until the release and uh, subsequent production stoppage of the 1909S VDB cent that Mint Mark collecting really took off. And this uh, takes place about 26 years after Augustus Heaton's monograph on collecting by Mint Marks was published, uh, again, to a much smaller hobby community. And he, re he recommended that collectors collect by mint mark instead of just by the date stamped on the obverse of the coin. The second matter, uh, the differentiation between proofs and business strikes developed a little bit later in the 20th century. And on this issue, the 1895 is an interesting coin because it actually is not the rarest Morgan dollar proof, not even close, uh, but we have tradition and it is a tradition that cements its place and the 1895's place in the Morgan dollar uh, uh, pantheon is more or less secure. Uh, but I feel that there are other uh, truly undervalued examples in the series. Uh, I'm looking specifically at the 1878 Seven Tail Feathers, 250 approximate mintage of that issue. So at 117,000, this is a solid price for the coin, advancing nicely on the 88,000. $125 at a similarly graded NGC example brought in 2013. All right, moving on. This is lot uh, 3984 from the Heritage Sale. And uh, this is a familiar friend, uh, uh, the uh, 
Brent Pogue, example, 1810, $5 small date, small five cap, bust half eagle. And PCGS MS62. This is the second finest known of the variety and an important condition since this coin in an unusual die state uh, for the variety because it does not have that terminal crack that begins at the bus truncation uh, and goes to the uh, to the rim above the star. Um, and so anyway, so this coin brings $156,000. Uh, it brought a much smaller sum when it was offered at the Pogue sale in February 2016, where it brought 99875 The coin now has CAC certification. None of the Pogue coins had CAC certification at the time. That was a consigner decision. It's not like the coins weren't fantastic quality. Everybody knows they were. Moving on, let's hit this coin here. This is 4115. This is a Boone half dollar map proof. Proof 63, uh, realized $84,000. And uh, interestingly enough, the last time this was auctioned, it was offered in a three-coin proof set, matte proof set, realizing over to about $223,000, I believe. So the coin has been split up from that original set. Traces its uh, pedigree back to Joe Sanuk, the U.S. Mint chief engraver. And uh, he uh, had this coin along with the P and the D and the S, but I guess this is the P men here. So uh, this coin uh, brings a very uh, good price of 84000 or at least that's the published realized price. There is a contact the seller, uh, and the uh, seller is willing to sell the coin for $100,000, which again, if you take the three coin, 223000 divided by three, this coin has advanced in price uh, since it was last offered. All right, now I'm going to switch uh, to another coin, a little bit of a interesting uh, coin here and a lesson for you guys at home. This is Heritage Lot number 4117, 1937 Roanoke, half dollar in SP67, Specimen 67, graded by NGC. $43,200 was the price realized. Now let's talk about this coin. Um, I thought I'd seen this coin before, actually, when it came up for sale. And I dig into uh, the archives, and sure enough, I was not mistaken. Uh, this same coin brought a strong price, yet considerably less. It brought $5,170 at Heritage Auctions 2017 A&A &A sale. Um, that, then the coin was graded MS67 proof like. And uh, I can confirm to you it's the same coin. It has the same rim ding around nine o'clock. It has the same uh, vertical, uh, or uh, I guess, uh, angled scratch uh, below the E and in Pluribus Unum. There are other uh, details, die markers and, and scratch placement that, that sort of confirm it's the same coin. So the difference here is that it's now in a specimen strike holder and uh, catalogers point out that the coin's obviously different than the others uh, that have come before. Uh, you can see a few things about it that are interesting. Sometimes the eye and united in these uh, Rowan Oaks is a little bit softly struck. You see some softness in the lettering. This coin does appear to be fully struck up. Uh, so uh, probably a very early die state. You do see some die lines, uh, which is kind of, which is common uh, for the Rowan Oak coins. Uh, but this is a uh, like I said, this is a very sharp coin. You can see sort of that those radial splashes that happen when the when these uh, dies are new. So uh, whether this coin was struck for some sort of uh, presentation purpose or was struck differently than others, NGC seems to believe so. Uh, and the coin has now brought a nine nine times over what it brought just three years ago when it was uh, at the uh, MS67 PL level. At the time, uh, Heritage's catalogers noted that this coin was in the condition since it's one of the three finest known. Now it's in a category all on its own, and as such, uh, I'd assume a very sophisticated commemorative coin collector took a, took a shot at this coin, bought this coin at a very high price, and uh, must have competed against other uh, bidders 
to get this coin. So there you go, 43200 an unusual price for a very interesting coin. Let's switch over to Stacks Bowers. Uh, we previewed this coin uh, two weeks ago in our streaming news segment. This is lot 1006, the 1793 strawberry cent. Very good 10, realizing 660,000. That's a, it's a pretty good price, I think, in a very hot market. It could have gone a little higher. Uh, this is one of the most famous uh, early copper coins, highly coveted coin. You will note the grade is low, but when there are only four examples, and this is the finest one, uh, this is as good as they get. I'd assume if there was a uh, mid-state uh, 65 red strawberry scent, uh, you're probably looking at like a 10, 15 million dollar coin. But as it is, uh, great is what it is. When you get to the uh, finest of four known, uh, this is it, um, and everything else is worse. So $660,000 is what it brought. This, of course, was in the Parmalee collection, other great pedigrees throughout the years. Uh, we predicted uh, that interest in this coin would exceed the $360,000 pre-sale bid that was on display on Stacks Buyer's website before the sale went live, and boy, were we right on. So uh, there you have it. Uh, and a curious side note about this coin, Don Perlman, the uh, press agent for the numismatic hobby, he sent us a clipping from a Las Vegas, Nevada newspaper that misrepresented the coin as a 1973 strawberry scent. Notice the digit of the century and the decade are transposed in that telling. And I commented to Don that I expected uh, to take a number of phone calls from people claiming to have the rare 1973 strawberry Lincoln scent. And mercifully, those calls have not uh, yet materialized. Uh, but getting back to the ESM, coll ESM collection, which this coin was part of, uh, the entire segment, which was a major part of Saks Powers Rarities Night, brought an impressive $4.6 million all told. This on top of the $1 million that Saks Powers sold the SM uh, half cents for in March. There's also uh, over a million dollars for the Lincoln Cent Collection. Uh, that make this one of the most valuable collection of coppers to sell at auction. And the overall prices were as expected, with some being very strong, some being eh, meh. But that's the market right now. Moving on, we have this beauty. This is a 1797 $10 gold coin, a Tarasca 7 variety. Uh, this is the Cat Bust Right Eagle with a small uh, eagle on the reverse. Uh, this is an R5 coin in a high grade, uh, and the NGC census of just three examples, an MS62 with one finer. That 63 is rather prominent adjustment marks on the obverse. So this example has some scattered marks and hits, but this is a very clean example. Note that great die crack uh, below the 13th star. Is that the 13th star? I gotta count. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16th star. Should have known that. Uh, so, uh, so it does have that die crack in the last uh, after the last star there. And uh, the reason that it has the additional stars is because of the inclusion of additional states. And once, uh, once we got to about 16 stars, the Mint realized how impossible it would be to keep up. They reverted back to 13 stars, and that is why that is the tradition. Uh, this uh, coin was offered uh, more than 70 years ago at the Farish and Baldenhoe for sale. Stacks Bowers put on Harry Bass Jr. owned this coin as well. And the hammer price was about what you'd expect for this date, this issue, uh, and this grade around $300,000. Uh, note, there are no PCGS graded coins at this level to date. Uh, and uh, on the reverse, if you see, it's a really nicely struck up eagle, nice clear wings, uh, just a slight bit of softness on the left leg and left side of the breast. All right, folks, uh, take a gander at this beaver. This is the uh, lot 1326, 1849 Oregon, $5 gold coin, MS62. This is an important, iconic uh, territorial issue. It was purchased by Doug Winter on behalf of a California collector who is working with Doug to build an important collection of pioneer territorial gold. According to Doug, this coin is about 95% fully struck, 
Uh, I will be honest, I have not seen one of these coins with this much uh, hair detail, uh, facial detail on the beaver. Uh, it is just a beautifully struck example. Uh, I talked to Doug earlier today about this, uh, and he told me that he went to uh, view this coin in person in July, uh, and uh, then and there he made up his mind he was going to make a strong play for it. Uh, just the slightest scattered marks, otherwise a beautiful coin, very choice. Uh, and uh, uh, the last time we saw this example, it was in 2014 at Heritage Auctions offering of the Riverboat Collection where it was housed in a GC holder at the same grade level. And then it realized $258,500. Uh, and then uh, this sale, you see, it went for $336 thousand dollars all right last coin we're going to talk about today and that's this one it's a more modern coin it's a 1961 half dollar uh, franklin half dollar uh, ddr it's fs801 the famous double die reverse the most famous double die in the franklin half dollar series beautiful coin in proof 68 uh, this close-up view, you can see the doubling is quite prominent, naked eye visible, uh, half dollar, a lot of that is doubled. United States is doubled, and E Pluribus Unum is doubled, and uh, you can quite distinctly see that without much effort at all. And so this coin is amazingly still available in, uh, in proof sets. Uh, you just have to look for them. They have to be original proof sets, though. I think these sets have been cycled through the industry. They likely have already been cherry-picked. This coin is uh, $14,400. Has a little bit of cameo. Not, uh, not common uh, to have cameos uh, in 1961. Uh, they do happen. Deep cameos do happen, but they have to be from the freshest of dyes. This is uh, one of your typical uh, Cameo Frost, a little bit here, a little bit there, not enough to get the designation, but beautiful surfaces, proof 68, and a five-figure coin every day of the week. So that's, uh, that's uh, sort of the coins that I was most interested in once I saw the results. Of course, you know, uh, you may have your own niches and areas of the hobby that you paid attention to. I had received numerous calls from collectors, including paper money collectors who chimed in about coins or any currency uh, items that they bought and they were very happy with. Uh, before I go, I know it's still in stock for now. It may not be in stock forever. Our 100 mo uh, Greatest Modern Coins, uh, Modern World Coins, is available at Coin Week Supplies. I dropped off a case of signed copies for Hubert and I both signed them. I don't know how long they're going to stay in stock. Uh, we have very attractive price below the cover price of $29.95. You can get them for uh, through Wizard, affordable shipping, and uh, that'll be they'll be sent out to you immediately. That is until they sell out. And uh, uh, you won't know uh, what coins are in the book until you get them. But the uh, the book has five star reviews on Amazon, and also uh, we were fortunate enough to be graced by two great write ups. David T. Alexander, one of the preeminent writers about world coins. Uh, loved it and said it was a book unlike any he's seen since he started collecting world coins in 1949. And uh, Lou Galino, the coin analyst, wrote a glowing review as well. You can read both those reviews before you make your purchasing decision on coinweek.com. All right, well, that's it for this week. I hope you guys had a great week. We're going to have a great uh, Coin Week podcast scheduled for uh, publication on Monday with Kevin Lipton, exclusive conversation. Also, next week, we expect to broadcast the premiere of the 2020 Numismatic Literary Guild Awards that Coin Week produced. We know all the winners, but you won't know for a few days. We'll have an announcement of when that will go up, uh, uh, probably Monday, and uh, then the video will follow uh, uh, shortly thereafter. And uh, next week on the Coin Week Streaming News, we're going to cover all of the different $20 bill iterations that have uh, been released during my lifetime, starting in 1976 to present. There are quite a few of them, and we're going to break them down, as well as the Tubman note that wasn't, but still might be. Depends on what happens in the fall. Anyway, uh, a quick uh, Easter egg for you guys. I don't know if it's still up there, but uh, on uh, the day, I guess it was Wednesday or whatever, uh, of earlier in the week, 
when uh, Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden announced his uh, selection of uh, Kamala Harris as his running mate. I just stumbled upon his website. I read a lot of political stuff from both sides. And uh, I noticed uh, one of our dear friends, uh, South Carolina resident and former political candidate, John Kralovich, was uh, featured in the video montage. So if it's still up, check it out. Anyway, I'm going to sneeze, and I want to go before I do that. For Coin Week, this is Editor Charles Morgan. Until next time.